Private Prisons Up in Smoke by Carl Torsbens, former Deputy Warden and Trainer. Our sincere condolences to the family of the fallen correctional officer in Natchez, Mississippi, Adams Correctional Facility, of which your story is focused on. Authorities said early Monday they had to put down a prison riot that claimed the life of a guard as it continued into a late evening Sunday. A 23-year-old guard died of head injuries in a disturbance at Adams County Correctional Facility in Natchez, Mississippi. It was not immediately clear what prompted the riot. As of 2.45 Monday morning, all inmates were secure in their housing units and the entire facility was on lockdown status, according to CCA, which owns the facility. Tragically, one employee transported to the local hospital did not survive injuries sustained from an assault by inmates, the company said in a statement. The guard's name was not released. Then the notification of Kim. Questions must be asked why the CCA prison went up in smoke as the corporate world continues to label it as a disturbance rather than what it really was, a riot. A riot that had all the ingredients of human lives at risk and the loss of a correctional officer while negotiations teams tried to find a way to release eight hostages or more kept inside the units when the place went up in smoke. There should be a lot of questions asked about what happened there. At one time, I know there were at least 24, 25 hostages we were being held. Adams County Sheriff Chuck Mayfield said. However, now all employees are out safely. Sixteen other staffers at the prison were treated and released from hospitals, CCA said. Three inmates were also transported to the hospital. As of Monday morning, one had been placed back into the prison, the company said. Mayfield said earlier Monday, the inmates' injuries were probably sustained from other inmates, one being a stab wound, concussion, and rib injuries. Authorities said Sunday that the disturbance posed no threat to public safety and was confined to the secure perimeter of the facility. Rumors of escape conflicts were unfounded, Mayfield said, and those are the normal things that come through a person's mind out in the community. The specter of a catastrophic failure in a company's mission or endeavor haunts senior executives in this industry when such an event as a riot occurs. For example, the overnight riot that disrupts a key operational correctional facility quickly grinds public concerns about its soundness and how safe it really is for staff to work in. Well founded as such worries are, given the increasingly globalized and interconnected operations of CCA, there are other things to worry about as well. Local and state law enforcement officials, as well as federal bureau prison people, helped quell the violence. Most contractual obligations by the state, county, and federal will be reimbursed. However, the loss of a human life will never be replaced. So although the cost may be supplemented in a contractual agreement, the loss of a human life will never be replaced. Rusty Boyd, the spokesman for Mississippi Highway Patrol, said Sunday that 45 to 55 units from the state police were helping corrections deal with this situation. Natchez facility is a 2,567-bed prison that houses men who are in the United States illegally and charged with crimes. What we call a low-risk detention or correctional facility. No less significant are subtler or more persistent sources of disruption such as labor or staffing issues, maintenance upkeeps, compliance, relevant laws and statutes, or the rise in costs that chips away at the profits, increasing costs, and force organizations to miss market opportunities. This is what it's all about. Profits, losses, profit gains. All of these issues have become more acute in recent years as rising volatility, uncertainty, and constantly changing prison-related business complexity have made it reacting to and planning a most unpredictable condition more difficult than ever. The political regime, however, wanting to build more private prisons will force and strain these corporate executives who are so willingly agreed to take the bid for a contract but no guarantees that such pressure it will make their places safer. I want to add an editorial here that is my opinion and some friends of mine. These CCA guards are poorly trained, poorly screened, poorly treated, and poorly compensated. Yes, for federal prisons they have been paid more than, but their benefits are still awful. There's a mammoth turnover in the corporate prisons. However, the bottom line is they're cheap with labor but expensive in the long run. 
Millionaire executives rarely have any contact with these operations. Their only interest is to grease politicians and bureaucrats and political appointees. They don't care about the workings of a facility or the welfare of staff. All they care about is the money. Facilities and equipment are often left to deteriorate since chronically deferred maintenance results in higher quarterly earnings, and the board and upper executives are compensated with stock options and awards. It doesn't make good sense to give the private corporation a sector a job as well designed and designated for government agencies to perform as professionals and not amateurs. The information that was uh, given CCA and Frank Smith. Thank you.